Hey everybody, it's Stu Smith with another two through and after with special guest, former Frogman Jeff Byers of Frog Fuel. Uh, we'll talk about his journey um, going from high school kid wanting to serve in the military to what he is doing now and everything in between. So Jeff, welcome. Stu, brother, great to be here. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. So as you know, this two through and after series is basically me just asking you about you so first question i always like to ask is like who was jeff byers when you were a high school kid like and what what was it that made you want to serve in, in this capacity so yeah i was i was a fairly decent athlete I, I ran a lot of track i played a lot of soccer um i grew up in albuquerque new mexico and i guess the bug kind of hit me in high school, my dad was a ranger. He was in okay. Vietnam. And so he kind of gave me a little direction or a nudge in that, you know, look in that direction. And you know, if I'm being honest, my high school was a little chaotic, like those last junior, senior year of high school. Um, I started going to class less than I should and partying more than I should, um, probably not that uncommon with guys like us <laughs> yeah. and I actually ended up it got to the point where I had to spend my last semester of high school in order to graduate living with my grandma how to say that's how bad I was okay but it, it, it did and then I graduated and I did a year of school uh, a university I went to University of Mississippi and I just it wasn't I didn't feel engaged and I didn't feel alive and I just needed something more. And that's, that's when I went and joined the team. So I went to buds when I was 19. Nice. Yeah. Nice. So, um, so getting, uh, prepared for buds, what, what did you find that you needed to do more of just what, what, what'd you focus on? Well, I was fortunate that it, at university I did that last semester. I took a swimming class cause that was my weak point. I could run. Um, I had like the fastest mile in the state of New Mexico. Oh, nice. When I was um, running track in high school. So running wasn't a problem. Um, the swimming was a big problem. The cold water I wasn't accustomed to, you know, like everybody. Sure. But at, at 19, you're able to put up with a lot of bullshit. And I think that's a big part of it. And I think not knowing what I was getting into kind of benefited me as well. Sure. You know, just doing it. Um, so the swimming, the diving dive phase was, it was weird. I had trouble with some of the water stuff in the beginning, but once I got comfortable, it was like something clicked and right, right around the pool comp time. Fortunately, I, I just got, I relaxed and got real comfortable in the water. And, um, once that happened, it, you know, it wasn't too bad. Yeah. That's a really good point. Cause you know, a lot of people, have that moment when something clicks you know whether it's a specific technique or it's just one of those things where you just gutted through some crap right and you just got through it and you survived i think you know, just say fuck it because i can worry about this and it's not doing me any good getting getting the anxiety and yeah you know how high the anxiety is especially oh, yeah every event is the worst event ever that no one ever passes yeah that's 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 how they build it up. Dude. That's how you live your life at Buds, right? It's one event to the next, and you're just trying to get through the the very next one every day. You're doing that three or four times. So yeah, absolutely. So you you would say that moment around pool comp was when everything kind of clicked for you and figured out, hey, I think I got this. Yeah, I was really you know having some doubts about, and that's a big evolution for people that don't know that. A oh, lot yeah, of pool, pool, yeah. Not hell week. You're probably gonna you know, get dropped or something's going to happen um, in the pool comp. Yeah, they call it OC8 now. So open circuit eight. So that, okay. Yeah, they, the, don't even call, they don't even call it pool comp anymore. They call it OC8. What's the eight? Uh, like the eighth session of open circuit. Oh, yeah. You okay. kind of build up to. Yeah, I, that's actually how much I things, know. Right? Things change. Things change. Yeah. And I don't know. Fortunately, something happened or I don't know if it happened, but I just, in my head, I just got really comfortable in the water. And, 
you know, it went from that, ver- like the very first or second day in the pool on the tanks when I'm like sh- shooting up through the surface in four feet of water because we're trying to do the buddy breathing. <laughs> I'm like, oh man, I'm in over my head and I don't know. Had but, you ever done scuba diving before? No, never. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. A lot of people have never put a regulator in their mouth until second phase buds, which uh, I, I never did. I started scuba diving when I was 12 years old. So that was, yeah. You know, I didn't say, I can't say I had an easy time doing it, but it, I thought it was beneficial. I'm sure that was, yeah, yeah. helpful for sure. Yeah. Or, or maybe, or it could be one of those things where you think you know, and you've done it in, in one environment under certain conditions, and then you're putting that one and, it, you know, it's yeah. Yeah, a absolutely. different animal, you don't know. But. Absolutely. So um, any funny stories from Buds you uh, uh, come to mind? Funny like share. Yeah. I mean, Buds was, honestly, for me, it was fun. I liked it. Um, it was, you just laughed at the, it, I think it was a coping mechanism. You laugh at how Absolutely. stupid and how ridiculous some of the stuff is. Like, you're just up all night, you're wet all the time, and you just have to laugh about it. And you la- and then if the guys around you can kind of do the same thing, it, it takes a lot of the pressure off of you, I think. Absolutely. Got to have a sense of humor. Yeah. It, it can be some of the funniest times of your life. If, if you have a sense of humor, you know, yeah. it, if you take things Absolutely. a little bit too seriously, it, it, it beats you down hard. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> but it was in, yeah, funny sh- shit happening there. Uh, and, and I'm dating myself, but it was like 20, that was like 25 years ago for me now. Yeah. Um, so mid nineties. Yeah. 96. Yeah. We, yeah. Um, but you know, great guys. I was actually, I did that swim up in New York city this weekend. And, um, one of my, one of my good friends from my buds class and I hadn't seen him since, um, was up there for the swim. So it was great. And I was like, Oh, that's not, that's a great little reunion. Yeah, it's like we had Man, never like, check that out. Sweet. That's cool. Um, Sh- Sean Brennan. I don't know if you know Sean, but he's out there on the East Coast. Gotcha. That kid was a badass. In our buds class, he was the fastest runner, the fastest swimmer, the fastest O course. And he graduated and he graduated buds twice, this kid. Wow. Whole thing. And he, he had a like a he got some, he had some issues. He had to do it twice. Damn. Um everything hell week all the way through but um well, yeah i have nightmares about that i mean i still get like little nightmares i go to sleep of like i right? gotta gotta repeat buds again <laughs> and it's like i couldn't it's imagine I know. or in your head you're, you're thinking like i'm too old to be do why am i doing this now i'm too old for this yeah i yeah. think sometimes like what <laughs> and then you wake up and you think, God, I don't need to be doing that right now. Exactly. So um, after after Bud, you went to uh, what SEAL team? I was at SEAL Team 1, so I stayed on the West Coast. Yeah. And I did a few deployments there. Um, and that's you know, some of the very best memories of my life, the best experiences of my life, the best friends of my life. I don't have a bad thing to say. I, you know, it'd be hard for me to pick anything negative to say about my time in the teams, really. Yeah, absolutely. Um, now, I know you had a different route later on, especially, uh, you know, after your second deployment in, in the SEAL teams. When did you decide to make that transition from SEALs into other government agencies? Yeah, so it didn't exactly work like that. Um, I... So this was pre 9-11 for me, mm-hmm. and I had a son at the time who is going to be graduating college this semester now. Nice. The next semester. And I just, it, it seemed more like, a, like something fun, and I just, I wanted, there was no war at the time, so I wanted to do something else. I got out, my wife and I had married at the time, um, moved to Phoenix, and initially I was a police officer in Phoenix. And I did that for a very brief period of time, um, about two weeks after the Academy. So nine, nine 11 happened. And then I got picked up on the intelligence side and I was a contract officer over there. 
um, since 2002. Wow. And you, you said you just finished a recent deployment. So you've been active with that for two decades almost. Brother, I've been, so I've been doing that for yeah, 18 years. Damn. And I got like 50 deployments in that neighborhood. I lost track. Wow. Um, and again, di- you know, different, you get guys from all the other back, all the soft backgrounds together, but it's the same thing, you know, good guys. Um, generally good times. There's a lot more. Yeah. Uh, politics and stuff on that side but sure yeah. man that that's impressive that that's some impressive I won't won't bother asking questions about those uh that world because that is you know yeah. super I, secret yeah. sensitive world but um okay. you know, we we can move on to what you're doing now because I find this really interesting because you have really made quite the transition into um commercial you know, world. Yeah. Well, I appreciate that. Um, it took some time. And so the deployment was part of that. I got to, you know, I was deploying so often and, you know, it happens to a lot of guys in that line of work, you, you know, you'll go through relationships and cause you're, you're gone all the time. It's stressful on all aspects of your life really. Yeah. And, and so there came a point where I'm like, I got to figure something else out here because, you, you know, you're having a great time. It's kind of a selfish endeavor, really. Um, but you have a kid and you got to provide and just, you know, be a man and do what's right. So um, at, an, at a necessity, Alex Coons and Alex and I did um, my second platoon together at Team One and we were always friends and um, real competitive. He's super athletic. And we have similar interests, motorcycles and sky, everything. Um, so I had a friend from my one year university. It's funny how things work. Um, who was doing medical sales and he had this liquid protein product and they were selling it to hospitals for all kinds of stuff, dialysis and chemo wound healing, especially. Oh, nice. So he's like, Hey, we got this great product. We want, we're, we're trying to get it into the military, do some stuff with it. Excuse me. Mm-hmm. So he reached out to me and initially, and then I talked to Alex about it and it started out as a licensing agreement. So the medical food existed. We took the formula, the Stanford PhD biochemist made it and just the nicest guy in the world. He's the head of chemistry down at Weber state in Utah. So we licensed it, same formula, we're making frog fuel. And this is, I guess this gets into the part of, we just pulled the trigger. We didn't really know what we were getting into. I'd never started a business. It happened because it needed to happen. Sure. I did something else because I don't want to be 60 and carrying a gun. Right. <laughs> and telling, telling stories at the VFW because I don't have a wife or a family or anything. But um so out of necessity, we, we just jump into this really kind of new to it. Alex was an IT nerd. So he got out and then he was working for Simper Energy. He was pretty high up doing all their uh, cybersecurity stuff. So we're doing this. It starts out as a part-time endeavor. I'm going back and forth overseas. Alex is working full-time at Sempra and, and we're just grinding along for like two years. It was and this this goes back to the inexperience but also not giving up because the economics of what we were doing didn't make a lot of sense we had a great product but the way it was structured we were having to license it from this other company and we had all of our overhead it was just killing we weren't getting anywhere so Mm. for a couple years that's how we existed just hand to mouth i'm still having to go back and forth back and forth and then I don't, I don't know if it's good luck or bad luck, but the medical company just does this really boneheaded move and um, they had a trademark on their product. It was called provide gold. So one of the founders friends, sees a multivitamin in a store and it's called provide daily, just innocuous, unrelated yeah. vitamin, but it's a, it, you know, it's still in the health um, arena. So, well, I'm sorry, the guy who sees it is also his, the attorney 
for this company. So he's like, hey, we need to file some kind of enforcement against these guys. They're using our name, cease and desist. So that's what they do. And turns out the parent company, right? It's this insignificant vitamin. So this can be a lesson for everybody. Pick your battles. Yeah. But the parent company is like a $500 million company. <clears throat> I say, okay, well, we're going to litigate this mm. until we just burn you guys down. And that's, that's the road that they headed down and they couldn't afford it. So um, Alex and I, at that point, we raised some money through our family and ourselves and we bought out the medical side and we had to change the name and that's, so we got protein gold. Now this is the, the medical food. Yeah. I saw that. Yeah. Yeah. So we own that. We got rid of the licensing agreement. So our economy, you know, the margins increased immediately and we, we had to rebrand it. That was part of the deal with the settlement with the lawsuit. And you know, that was, and then that kind of changed everything, but it was just hanging in there. And, you know, quite honestly, there's a little bit of a luck involved. Um, well, you make your own luck. That's for sure. Yeah. And yeah. by, by you, mainly hanging in there, <laughs> you know, not giving up for yeah. If you work hard, you, you know, good luck, good things that tend to happen. So Yeah, let me share the screen here and show uh, what we're talking about here. So this is your website, Frog Fuel. Yeah, yeah. That's and it. Uh, this is what they come in. About how, about how many grams of protein are in these? So it's 15 grams in that one. That, the one on the right's the pre-workout and the endurance fuel. But it's okay. A, yeah, it's a collagen-based protein, so it's, it's different. Oh, I've had it. I, I ordered some a while back ago. It was really good. I appreciate it. Really I'll, helpful. Yeah. I'll send you some more. Oh, well, sure. thanks. Um, but that, so the collagen, the way it synthesizes and the research is pretty clear on this, but at 15 to 20 grams is where it peaks in terms of stimulating collagen synthesis in your body. So mm -hmm. that's why the dosage is what it is. Um, collagen's a lot higher in certain amino acids than whey. And mm -hmm. the other proteins and that's why it it's really good for your your connective all your tissues right but like proline glycine and arginine are, are the big ones that it's incredibly high in and that's what stimulates the collagen synthesis so that's why the dosing is what it is and yeah, yeah it looks like you really got some triathletes really digging this i mean that makes a lot of sense you know for how easy it is to you know, get, grab that. I remember just having them in my car after mm -hmm. workouts, you know, cause it's going to be a little while before I got home to, to eat something. And it was, it was a good little, you know, kickstart for recovery for sure. Yeah. So in that, the protein ones got no carbs, no sugar. So every calories from protein, you know, if you're keto, whatever you're doing, it'll, yeah. you know, it's not going to affect that. Um, and the other one, the ultra, the, the pre-workout and the endurance fuels. So if you think of a goo, which is just sugars, yeah, you know, carbs, uh, that's a lot different because it does have protein. It's got less protein, but it's got carbohydrates, it's got beta alanine, citrulline malate. Right. And it's just a very well-balanced uh, fuel. So what's the difference between the, the frog fuel and the protein gold? Uh, very little. So the frog fuel on the left there, the far left, the power uh -huh. protein, yeah. And the protein gold are nearly identical. The protein gold has a little more arginine, but other than that, they're the same. Okay. And they, yeah. so the, it's a, it's a medical label. So hospitals aren't going to use frog fuel. They're going to use right. protein. <laughs> well, that's pretty impressive that, you know, it, it is being used as it is in the medical community. Cause that, that, that's kind of the differentiator with most supplement plants programs you know yeah. because i mean the protein gold is a medical food it's digested fast it's faster than anything else 100 percent digestion under 15 minutes we've proven that nice it heals wounds and that's a big part of the medical application so especially like nursing homes or diabetics people who get um, pressure injuries or bad wounds wounds yeah. that won't heal yeah it, it'll heal them i mean we've had customers who have had wounds for two or three years that haven't healed and they take it and they see like um, 11 centimeter wounds at a lady last week had healed up in just a matter of months. Nice. Nice. Man, I just learned something today. Cool. Yeah. And you got these shirts, Outperformance Squared. What's that mean? So <laughs> Outperformance Squared, that's, 
it's just kind of op2 is the the parent company that uh-huh. makes that's what alex and i that's the company op2 labs oh okay yeah okay. it was like the after like now the second op after the, ah. after the deployments so ah, yeah. i like it that's cool little pun yeah and i i originally found you on um social media so yeah, you have uh, I, I hate social media honestly but maybe alex yeah. or rock feel itself you know what that's, that's where i found you on yeah. um just uh you know it seems like you know on instagram you know people uh you know we tend to gravitate towards the same world um yeah. you know we tend to follow the same people so let me uh just sh- share this if you're guys are interested in damn what the hell i do with it i thought i had it up here but maybe i maybe i don't you got the instagram up there there we go instagram there we go oh yeah yeah up there so yeah this is a yeah yeah a good friend of ours and one of our employees runs this but yeah and there's al yep excellent nice that's always cool stuff Pulling trucks. That dude's a badass. He's got <laughs> four or five Guinness World Records. Oh, I saw that. Yeah, you got some great guys uh, and gals using your stuff there. So it's uh, it's um, definitely impressive. Oh, I like that. Cool. Now you can get this at grocery stores too. Uh, you can get it at H E B, Tom Thumb, United Supermarkets. Yeah, it, it depends. Okay. That's mm-hmm. cool. Nice. Nice. So what's next for frog fuel? Um, oh man, we just, well, at this steps. point now we just got to grow this thing and just build the business. So I don't have to go overseas and, <laughs> and it's, you know, it was a grind, bro. It was such a grind in the beginning. Just yeah. you didn't know, but you don't want to quit. Right. Cause we're taught. You just, I'm not going to fail this. So I think, that was part, I mean, I, I, had we known what we were doing, we probably wouldn't have gotten into it to begin with, but thankfully we did and we're, we're where we are now. Um, but yeah, so it's, we're just gonna keep growing it, brother, and you know, try to help as many people as we can and support the community and guys like you. And Yeah, I'll tell you what, you, for a fitness community, you got the medical community, you have guys still doing ops, you know, you, you need that boost, you know, mm-hmm. and sometimes you don't have time to open up a whole MRE. You know, you just. Well, as you get older too, your body, so it, it produces less collagen. Collagen's the most predominant protein in your body. Yeah. And it's, you know, 60 to 80% of the, the protein in all your soft tissues. And now we know that those given the right amino acids, like our, our product, they will synthesize protein. So your cartilage, your tendon, your ligaments, um, they will synthesize and turn over proteins as fast or faster than muscle. Nice. I'm, I'm, I think I'm just going to keep packs here, you know, yeah, just ste- steady, you know, steady packs. No, I'm, I support all veteran companies. So, um, I'm, yeah, we do too. We you, like you'll, you'll see my orders come through. Yeah. I mean, we, we know how, you know, getting out of the military and, I don't know about what your experience was. I mean, was it when you left, did you know what you were going to do or did you just kind of, did you have a plan? Cause I didn't necessarily have a plan when I got out. No, it kind of evolved. And, um, you know, I knew I wanted to do something in the fitness world, just didn't know what it was going to be. And so I kind of created this genre that, that we now call tactical fitness. You know, mm-hmm. back then it was, I was doing military law enforcement and firefighter, training um and it just kind of evolved and my writing evolved with it um uh, but no i didn't really know and you know and and i think probably like yourself um that transition of going out you you lose a lot that you don't realize you lose your your professional group you lose your you know status to a degree you lose um your social group yeah, you know, I moved to a different identity too, right? Because yeah, you lose, lose every, a little bit of everything. And, you know, and I remember trying to make new friends when I was out and it just wasn't the same. You know, I'd, I'd, I'd set up, you know, yeah, hey, yeah, let's go do something. I'll meet you over here at six o'clock and 
you know, no one's on time. You know, <laughs> everybody, it's just a mess. You know, it's harder to relate for me. It was harder to relate to them. Oh yeah. Um, yeah. I'll give you a good story about, I had just gotten back from, from a trip, I don't know, somewhere on a deployment and my son had a soccer game. He was like 10 at the time. <laughs> yeah. in Phoenix. And there was, it was an aggressive, like physical game. And my, my kid's team ended up winning by a goal or something. And the other team was pissed after the game. And the kids were going through like shaking hands and one of the parents starts yelling at, at one of the, the other kids on uh, my son's team, like a grown man. And he's cussing and I'm like, oh, fuck this guy. And so I go out there and I'm like, hey, you want to pick on somebody your own size? And, you know, and, and, and I'm like, I know. And then a couple of their other parents come out and it gets into this yelling thing. And I turn around and every one of the other parents like they got their tail talked it's crickets they're over there like oh my god <laughs> i wasn't even my kid and i'm out there i'm like and but that's how the, that mentality is like had i been with my the, the seals or the guys from work like everybody's oh it would have been right behind you yeah They'd have been looking for that one not the case always oh uh, yeah well that, that that is definitely um that, that's definitely a mess but it's also uh definitely um uh, a good way to explain the transition and the different relationships that you sometimes are forced to make um, yeah. when you're when you're transitioning out and away from that community again it, it can be somewhat challenging it's it's a different attitude mm -hmm. I think. yeah um, at, at least in the spec off side yeah you know what i did i i created a, a program here it's just a free training I, they're my workout so one day i was working out at 6 a.m uh -huh. And I saw these kids trying to learn the practice, the combat swimmer stroke. You know, they were both going, trying to go to buds and I just happened to bump into them and I uh, said, let me, let me show you how I do it. And, and I just said, I'm here every day at six. And then they brought buddies and then they brought buddies. And then next thing I know, I got a 6 a.m. workout every wow. day with a bunch of kids, that want, go to buds? kids that want to go spec ops. Yeah, they all did. Oh, hell and yeah, uh, yeah it's pretty cool. And then, so I just now have this group that I call heroes of tomorrow where I train kids for free that want to serve. Uh -huh. And it, and it just, it's very similar. You know, they're, they're basically the same conversations as I had when I was their age, but just with people with different faces, you know, it, and it's just the same type of people that I have found. And one, they're, they're 20 years old and they give me hope for the future, but you know, it, it kind of created my own little community that uh, I think I was missing so much. So do you stay in touch with them after they graduate? You still? Oh yeah, contest? yeah. Guys yeah. in in the pipeline, through the pipeline. I got guys retiring after twenty you years. Got your own fire team. When team you... and team life. So yeah, it's it's after pretty fun. Whatever falls apart, you got your own little squad. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. So like I said, I I missed that community of folks and I it, you know you almost have to cr find a way to create it for yourself. You know, like That's you create. Great. You're exactly right. Yeah, you sold. Yeah, create this company that you now have all these great people with a, a like-minded mission, and you know it kind of puts you back on track. So. Absolutely. No, that's that's key, I think. And if guys are listening and getting out, thinking about it, I I think that's important. Um, it, it would be hard, at least for me. I don't know about you, but to go in and Alex did it. He he struggled at Sempra. I mean, he was making good money over there. But he was, it was a corporate job and um, the camaraderie was completely different. So oh, yeah. think about what you want to do and who you want to associate with. And, you know, be, you got to be honest with yourself, too, because like Alex was making a lot of money, but he was not. He wasn't happy at all. Yeah, that's so. a good point. But now he's making less money, but the company's growing. We're doing really we're doing much better. And um yeah, he's he's happy. We're all happy. You know, ninety percent of the time, ninety percent of the time, Alex and I get along great. But <laughs> like team guys, ten percent of the time, like just yesterday, dude. Oh, I haven't talked to him in about twenty four hours because we're upset with him. But anyway. <laughs> uh, that's funny. Yeah, that figures. Um, so, uh, wh where are you located out of? Where, where's Frog Fuel headquarters? 
Well, Frog, we the corporate office is in Dallas. Okay. So we're kind of spread out. I yeah. live in Idaho. I'm up in Boise. Oh, okay. Uh, the warehouse is in Mississippi. And that's the same facility we had when the medical company existed and, and the employees down there. Okay. Kept that in place. We moved the office to Dallas where Alex is. He was out in San Diego. He relocated out there. And yeah, I mean, we can do a lot of it virtually, you know. Yeah, now, sure. You, you can realize how how easy it is to connect like this and the Zooms and everything. Absolutely. So not always ideal, but it, it makes it feasible. Um, yeah. That's cool. So um, I, I saw on a recent, um, I guess it was a press release that you had that you guys are teaming up with, uh, um, I mean, not teaming up, but you had had a, a investor come in, guy, Shopify guy, was that it? Yeah, Dan, Dan Winan. He was one of the, the co-founders of Shopify. Tell you what, I have a Shopify store. Love that thing. That thing is yeah. well, we use huge, it. huge for business. Yeah, if you want to sh set up a commerce site, it's, yeah, that's where you want to do it. Definitely. Yeah. It's, yeah, definitely links social media with it and everything is just so easy. Yeah. So and easy. Dan's a really sharp guy, very analytical, mm -hmm. very helpful with, he's a very thoughtful person. Like, uh, everything is deliberate with him where I'm a little more emotional and Alex can be too. We're like, oh, let's just do it. It's <laughs> very, and yeah, which is why he founded a multi-billion dollar tech company probably. Yeah. Um, no kidding. But yeah, he, he brings a, a, you know, a very good uh, value and opinion and insight to the company. Yeah, I, I can imagine just with his website e-commerce abilities, it's going to make a big difference. You know, not, yeah. not just, you know, with his, you know, recommendations of, you know, doing that by, you know, but and growing it to it's where it's good about knowing what the consumer when they're looking at the like little stuff that you wouldn't necessarily pick up on like words or fonts or colors and layout stuff like that i mean it's all you know it's all important you get down oh, yeah. to a granular level you don't realize how much is really involved with some of that stuff yeah absolutely well that sounds good i mean it sounds like you are preparing yourself for the next level and uh Love to see that for uh, guys that have spent most of their lives serving in other capacities, and now you're creating other ways to serve yeah. a community. And it's fun, right? It's fun to be building something and producing something and seeing results. Like you, like when you get your your students that are graduating and you know improving their lives, and or you're helping people get stronger and fitter and yeah. recover from injuries chemotherapy and stuff like that it's, it's just great to you know yeah give back in a different way i guess yeah absolutely well that's cool so where where can we find you it's what what website frogfuel.com proteagold.com that's p-r-o the letter t gold.com that's okay food. and op2 labs is a company all right so. well good deal so any uh any last comments uh you have for uh young young think about the audience here you know probably some young guys that are considering spec ops in their future sure uh, i would say in my opinion if you're thinking about it do it don't hesitate because the longer the longer you think about it you're just gonna instill doubt and quite honestly as you get older it's it's more difficult to do that stuff um so if you want to do it do it don't hesitate and just you have to be resilient yeah you don't have to be you know you've heard it a million times you don't have to be the fastest guy you don't have to be the strongest guy but you need to be able you need to be resilient and you need to be able to put up with a lot of shit repeatedly <laughs> that is so true so true hey hey jeff i really appreciate your time um, I'll put all those links that you just mentioned in the description below Perfect. and this will be up on YouTube and, um, I'll share it on Instagram and tag you guys and be up on all the places where you can get podcasts, Apple podcasts and Spotify and all that. So hopefully we can get the word out about frog fuel and, um, 
yeah, help you grow. Great, Stu. I appreciate it, brother. It was a pleasure doing this with you. And um, yeah, if you need anything from us, please just, you know, reach out. Cool, man. Thank you. And thanks everybody for listening. It us. Yep. Okay. Thanks guys.